Hey everyone, let's start with another lecture video about like um, for CS2505. Today we are going to take a look at debugging and the debugger, which is the GDB. So for historical like reasons, we take a look at why we call the whole um, process debugging in um, CS. Like, why is it called, you know, like, why do we call it debugging? So um, the first um, bug in computer history was actual bug. And since then they started to call it a um, bug whenever there is something wrong with your program and to fix it, it's called debugging. Okay, so that's something interesting to know about. So yeah, so debugging versus testing. Okay, so like what's, what's, what's the difference between these two? So software testing is any activity aimed to evaluating an attribute or capability of a program and determining whether it meets specified results. Like um, all about like, does it work? Okay, debugging is a methodical process of finding, reducing uh, the number of bugs or defects in a program, thus making it behave as expected. All about like, why does it not work? Or what can we do about it? They are fundamentally different activities. Testing can indicate the need of debugging, but often provides only superficial clues as to location or nature of the error. So that's like a formal um, definition of like debugging and testing, but uh, what's the informal way to um, say it? So testing is basically like, for example, you are making a video game, okay? So you are checking whether your video game works, like whether, for example, you're making Mario, whether your Mario is jumping, whether your Mario is able to break the rocks, whether it is able to jump on the Goombas. So that's the idea, okay? So that's what testing does. You have to test whether it is working as it was intended, whether it was able to do what you planned it to do. But debugging is more about like fixing the problems. Like for example, if you jump on a Goomba, for example, your Mario is getting hurt. So that's definitely a bug. That's not how it was supposed to be. So now you start the process of debugging, like how to fix that actual problem. So that's the difference between debugging and testing. They are more or less the same thing, but like testing is basically meeting the criteria and debugging is to fix whatever problem is like you are facing while trying to get that criteria, okay? So um, my favorite method of debugging is printf, okay? Like uh, you literally put the thousands of printf many of places and then you expect it to show up and whenever you do not see it, you're like, okay, maybe um, that's not the problem. Like that's the problem where um, I'm facing the bug or something like that. Honestly, there are going to be like thousands of debugging tools for you, like GDB or Java, Eclipse as like debugger, even Python has debugger, but at the end of the day, you will probably just be using printf. But in this course, we will be needing GDB because GDB also lets you take a look at the assembly uh, part of the code, which is pretty helpful if you want to know what's happening inside the machine. So that's why printf is probably the best thing you can ever imagine, but still you need to learn the GDB, okay? Um, printf is perhaps the simplest approach to debugging is to add output code to the program in order to display the values of selected variables and indicate flow of control as the program executes. This is often referred to as um, instrumenting the code. It is easy to apply uses um, uses preprocessor directive to enable disable diagnostic output, let the code uh, tell you what is exactly happening as opposed to what you believe is happening. Psychological issues often hindered to debugging can be cumbersome and difficult to tune, but at the end of the day, this is probably the best tool, best tool you have, which is the easiest one to work with. Now we, well, in this lecture, we are going to take a look at the GDB. GDB is the GNU debugger. GDB is a system tool that allows the user to step through execution of a program instruction by instruction. You can go line by line, not just the C code, but also the assembly code. View and even modify the values of variables. You can change the variables on Go just to see how the um, program is going to, you know, react to it set breakpoints that cause the execution of a program to be halted at a specified um, places in the code. For example, like I explained um, 
you are making Mario, right? And when you are jumping on a Goomba, you can set a breakpoint to when you jump on a Goomba. That's where your execution is going to stop. And then you can check all the variables and see where it went wrong. Set watch points that causes the execution of a program to be halted whenever the value of user defined expression changes. It is like a conditional break, like it stops when a certain condition uh, meets. Show a list of active stack frames. Stack frames are more important when you are working with functions because, and especially recursive functions, or well, any sort of function. Um, like stack frames actually give you the more detailed information of where are you in the execution, which how many functions were called beforehand or how many functions are going to be called afterwards. I, in the previous um, like lecture, I explained how the stack frame works. So um, GDB actually lets you take a look at that. Display a range of source codes, source code lines. So um, you can actually see where your execution stopped and like, um, what went wrong, you can take a look at it. Deassemble the current machine code to assembly language. Like um, you can actually see the assembly version of the code um, like step by step, which is honestly pretty helpful. And it, it lets you learn more about like how the code works and how it um, communicates with the computer. There are some um, GDB resources. You can go, you can read the book if you want. You can check the, um, uh, link. I actually didn't check with this, whether this link works or not. It's a very old slide. Maybe it does. If it doesn't, let me know. Okay. So let's take a look at the example program. This program is added to your um, like GitHub repository. That and um, yeah, the fixed version is also given, and the unfixed, which we are going to take a look right now, is also given. So first, go through this step by step with me and see how it can be fixed. And later on, um, you can check whether your solution matches the one I have given, okay? So this is what the source code looks like. We have like um, a defined max primes. We are, we have a function called like um, check prime. We have the main over here. And we also have the um, check prime functions implementation, okay? You can take a look at the code yourself. This is just like, um, in the slides so that you can follow. So first we are going to deb um, debug it and to debug a code, we have to make sure that we enable a certain uh, option, which is minus ggdb3 or minus g. Whichever you prefer, it's, um, <clears throat> it's the same. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. And we can actually put the, um, put the optimization to least optimized, like the more optimized it is, the more complicated your code gets whenever it is um, translated to the assembly code. <clears throat> Usually it's best to keep it least optimized so that the assembly code makes more sense to you. The more optimized it is, the less it will make sense because then you have to have more advanced knowledge about the assembly language, okay? So whenever you're um, running a code and you want to debug it, make sure that you have this option over there, this or minus G, okay? So you know the rest of it, GCC minus O, the executable file is not going to be named metal off. Uh, we are going to use this standard. We are going to use the least amount of optimization. These are the errors, sorry, um, warnings. And we have the minus G or minus G to be three. If you do not add it, um, when you are trying to use debugger, it's just going to take a look at the object file, which doesn't have any information about the source code. So if you try to list the source code, like where in my code something went wrong, it won't be able to give you that information. So if you want to see that information, you have to make sure that you have minus G or minus GGDB3. Another interesting um, trivia or special knowledge over here is, Every single um, code when you are working with should be in the debugging state so that you can actually debug your problem and um, you know fix it. But whenever you are actually shipping your program, you should make sure that it is not in the debugging state. It is in the production version because in the debugging state, the source code is given. So a user, like an advanced user can hack your program and change it to the way they want it because they have access to the source code. And you know, like they can hack it um, and they do not have to pay you for 
the product. So whenever you are actually trying to sell a product, make sure you are not in the debugging state. So whenever you are actually um, creating a C program or later on any Java or Python program, make sure that the debugging option is not open, it's closed. You do not use that option because if you do that, the source code and everything will be inside that object file. So you should only be using it when you are debugging the problem. Whenever you are not debugging it, whenever you are shipping your program, you should make sure that any debugging information is not there. Another interesting um, like aspect to it is, I don't know if you played Doom Eternal, but if you take a look at the Doom Eternal speedrun, you will see that in one of the stages, there is a debugging room where you can actually steal the BFG way before it is actually unlocked to you. And um, if you see the director's cut, like um, direct, the programmers were actually um, reacting to how people are doing speedrun, and then there is this one person who is like, who left the debugging room open? <laughs> okay, so that person actually forgot to remove that debugger debugging part from the code so the speedrunners are making use of it so that's why this is very important whenever you are shipping a program make sure you do not have minus g or minus gtp3 uh, in your compilation and when you are actually you know um, checking with where, why your web code went wrong and stuff like that that's when you should use this option okay so we are going to um, compile it and if you try to compile it, you will see that there are some warnings. We are going to ignore them for now because we are going to fix them through the GTPP3. When we try to execute the command, we see that uh, the program prompts the user for a bound on the number of values to be checked. I entered the value 20. And after I ran it, it gives me a segmentation fault. And I have no idea why uh, segmentation fault happened. And in this course and later on, you will see segmentation fault way too many times, like way too many times. And if you ever see segmentation fault and if you come to my office hour or any TS office hour, the first thing you will be asked to do is run GD GDB. Because whenever you see segmentation fault, there is definitely something wrong with your code. Maybe there is a memory error. Maybe there is um, like null pointer exception or um, something like that. Whenever any sort of exception or um, error happens, you will get a segmentation fault. And whenever you get a segmentation fault, you should make sure that you use GDB. Okay. So um, the first thing we're going to do is run GDB. And this is what the information you're given whenever you run GDB at the beginning. To run the program, we are going to use the command run over here. Okay. Uh, we are going to use the, uh, the command run. You can also use R if you want. It's going to do the same thing. And remember, this run or R is equivalent to running, like for example, in this example, metal off in your terminal, okay? So whenever you want to run a program that has parameters, like for example, maybe it took parameters like 10, 20, you should be writing them after run, okay? You shouldn't be writing something like run, then metal off, then 10, 20. That's wrong because run is a replacement for the executable file name. Okay, so the parameters come right after run. Anyway, that's something I wanted you to know. Maybe in the later part of this slide it is explained again, but um, I just wanted to make sure that I do not forget about telling you this because many of the students kind of face this problem. They end up um, deleting their input file which happens, you will be facing that a lot, you learn from the struggles, but you know. So after we run the program, it asks us for an input, okay? So it will uh, literally stop there and wait for you till you put the input, okay? Now this gives us some information, including the address of the machine instruction that caused the error and the function, oh, sorry. Um, then you, we put 20 and press enter, and it says that there is a segmentation fault, and it tells us where these things went wrong. Okay, so it said that there is something wrong with the if scanf. So let's take a look at like which part of scanf it went wrong. 
We can also use a um, command called backtrace. Backtrace basically um, shows you the stack where it happened. Like for example, in the main function, you are calling a function called like permutation. And in the permutation, something went wrong. So if you write backtrace, it will actually give you the information like you are at the permutation right now, it was called from main, which was called by system and all of those. So in this case, if we do backtrace, it shows us that it went wrong in the scanf, and it was called by scanf function, which was in the main in line 26. This is the line number, okay? This shows the stack uh, contains three stack frames at the time of error occurred. Provides the crucial information that in line 23, there is a scanf where it went wrong. So let's see what, what was there in line 26. If we use the command list, it will actually show us the current line that we are on. So this is what the code looks like, okay? So we saw that in, um, in this part that line 26 has some sort of problem. So over here, we see the line 26. This is the line 26 and there is something wrong. And we know that I have told you uh, many times in the basic IO that whenever you're using this scanf, you should have an ampersand over here. As the ampersand wasn't here, um, that's why the scanf failed, okay? So you can fix that. You can kill the program. Kill, killing the program basically means like stop there and now we will be starting all over again, okay? So before modifying the source code and rebuilding, we need to stop running the process by using the command kill command. Okay, well, we don't need to do that. We could edit the code in a text editor, save it, recompile it in a second terminal, and that's how Professor McQueen does it. For me, I always stop it, I change the code, I run it all over again. And it's up to you how you wanna do it, okay? Fix the first bug. So we fix the first bug, and it was like uh, we didn't put ampersand before the upper bound. So that's fixed. Let's try the program again. It gives us segmentation fault again. That means it wasn't completely fixed. Let's take a look at where it went wrong this time. So we restart the program and this time it says that it actually happened in line 50, in this line, which is a new place. So at least we, it, we know that we fixed the previous problem. This is a new one. This time we got better information because the source of mat, metal of .c is available. And from this, we can see that like check prime was called with k equal to three because it says that. And the error occurred in the prime j. So we can try list again to see the source code of it, okay? So um, it gives us the information and there is something wrong with the j because prime j is where it happened. And whenever segmentation fault happens, one thing you can assume that maybe it is array out of bound. So we want to see the value of j. So try print j. Whenever you want to see the value of a variable in the uh, program, you just write print space that variable name. In this case, print space j. And we see that the number is this, that it should but our code should have been less than 100, right? So why did that happen? So one culprit could be because of this while true loop. It shouldn't be like that, right? It should be something else. So um, let's take a closer look at the code and see what could have went wrong. So it's, it's running forever and it's checking whether the prime whether that um, index, j index of prime is true or not. Remember, it's true if it's a non-negative and if it's false, if it's zero, okay? So if there is zero, it's going to break. If it's not zero, it's going to continue, okay? Then it's doing a modulus whether k is divided by j or not. If it's not, we put the value of false in prime k. Uh, sorry, if it is um, equals to zero, which means like k is divided by j, then um, we put 
um, zero in the prime k, which we are basically saying that if k is divided by any number, which is j in this case, then it means that that number is not prime and we are putting that in the array and we are returning. So as you can see, j plus plus, it's going to keep happening forever, right? It's never going to stop. So we need a way to stop it. And because of that case, uh, it went way out of bounds. Like it didn't stop at 100, it kept going on and on and on. And that's why we face this problem. So in the while loop, like yeah, instead of true, we should have some sort of like condition that maybe J should stop before it reaches K or like it should be less than square root of K if you know the um, algorithm of finding prime number. Okay, so um, instead of the um, true, we are going to use a for loop where J starts from two, J, uh, if J is less than um, square root of k, it's going to stop. And then we do j plus plus. And we do j plus plus over here again for some reason, which is a um, spoiler alert a error. Okay? If we try it again, we see that um, 2 is a prime. And that it, it stops there. Why did it stop there? Maybe there is something wrong. So to find out what went wrong, we are going to put some um, breakpoints, okay? So breakpoints are the points where your code is going to stop executing and you can check all the values and stuff and to make sure why it went wrong. So we are going to put a breakpoint in the line 23, okay? And then we are run, we, sorry, 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 my bad. We are going to put a breakpoint in the main, okay? So whenever the program executes, it just stops, okay? Then we are going to run it. So when we run it, it basically stops at line 23. And it shows that prime max prime is equal to zero. So we are basically initializing the array. Then we are going to use next. What next does is it goes line by line in the program. Instead of um, you know executing the whole thing, it just goes line by line. So we are going to use next and it shows that this is where it stopped. Then we are going to do next again. And then we have a scanf. And scanf is basically um, going to wait for you over here. Because like as long as you don't put a value, it's going to, it's not going to move, okay? So we are going to put the value of 20 and then it's going to go to the new line, which is prime two equals true, okay? Then we are going to do next again. We are going to start at the loop. Then we are going to get here. Then we are going to look back, which is weird. If you take a look at the source code, you will see that there are more lines that were supposed to be executed, but it just like um, looks back right after check time. So there is something wrong. So if you take a look at the source code, you will see that we kind of forgot to put braces over here. So if you put the braces, it will work fine. So now your code runs just fine. So feels like everything is fixed, right? Oh, I guess. Now we are going to take a look at another thing, which is the conditional break. So you can put a breakpoint when a certain condition is made. And the syntax for it is break space. You have to specify which line is going to happen. If then you put the um, you know um, condition. Okay. In this case, if j is greater than prime, it's going to stop. The breakpoint here will trigger only if execution reaches line 51 and condition is true. The condition is expressed using this C syntax. And remember, instead of equal, we're uh, sorry, instead of equal, equal, like in C, we are using equal, okay? So um, it's going to stop here whenever that particular um, condition meets, okay? So yeah, that's it for this, um, for this lecture. It was just a basic understanding of how GDB works. You can 
try running it yourself and see if it makes sense to you. You can try running that in the assignments as well, which will definitely help you. And remember, whenever you face some sort of segmentation fault, run GDB at the beginning. Like literally, don't ask help for anyone, don't go Google, do not do anything, just run GDB, okay? That's how you start and um, later on, you keep going on and on and so on, okay? So yeah, I'll see you in the next video.